If you've got a 3,500 watt generator similar to this one, and you're only using the standard 120 volt outlet on the front of it, you're probably not getting all of your usable power that you paid for. The only way you're going to get the full 3,000 or 3,500 watt peak out of a generator like this or any other type of inverter generator, I've seen them go up to like Powerhouse from Northern Tool is a 4,500 watt now. The only way you're going to get the full power out of this is to use this particular outlet. Now, if you've got an RV or a motorhome or a camper trailer or something and you plug your entire camper into this outlet that feeds the electrical panel in the RV and you're getting full power out of the generator. If you're like me and you do tent camping or camping out of the back of your pickup truck and you don't have an RV to plug into here and you're only using this front outlet, depending on what this breaker rating is, I've seen it listed in the manual as 20 amps. I downloaded the PDF file for the owner's manual from the Harbor Freight website on this one. I did a, a word search on that document for the word amps, and nowhere in the instruction manual does it list the rating for this breaker, except for there's a, there's a picture of this front control panel, which I'll put up here, showing that this is a 20 amp breaker and this is a 30 amp breaker for the RV outlet. However, I've seen videos on the internet where people have had to upgrade from this generator to the new 4,500 watt power horse from Northern because Breaker on his Predator was tripping at 15 amps. And I have a friend who owns this exact same generator and he was using a, a heat gun on his to defrost a, a refrigerator or a, or a freezer and his was tripping at 13 amps. So either way, the only way to get the full power is to run out of this outlet. So that's why I built this particular device to plug into that outlet and now I have what I call a portable power distribution box. Some people might call it a spider box on uh, commercial job sites but what it does is it takes the full power, the full up to 3500 watt peak which is roughly 29 amps and feeds this entire box like the panel in an RV down into usable outlets. Two outlets 20 amps each each outlet is a 20 amp receptacle. Be careful when you buy these GFI outlets, you can get them in 15 and 20 amp. My breakers are sized at 20 amps each, and I have one breaker per outlet, GFI protected. Yes, I do have two 20 amp breakers on this. Let's see if you can see that. And obviously, you're not going to get 40 amps out of a 30 amp outlet, but just like in your home electrical panel, like at my house, I have a 100 amp main breaker, but if you add up all the individual breakers, you know, I'm at like 190 amps. The theory is you're never going to use the full rating of every single breaker in your panel at the same time. So each one of these outlets is capable of 20 amps, but not at the same time. So it's just like kind of like the same thing in your panel at home. And I also included an electrical gauge which gives you all the information that the gauge on the generator will give you. Not only did I build a box that gives me the full power potential out of the generator, I included some safety by adding GFI outlets, and I also added cable length. So depending where you camp, like if you camp down in you know Quartzsite, Arizona, or you know somewhere in the desert southwest, it probably doesn't matter, but where we camp up, up in the north woods, you know, it's nice to, you know, we camp along a tree line and you can push your generator off into the woods and run a cord out to your campsite and it helps with noise reduction. Even though these are really quiet, you know, the further you can get the generator away from your campsite, the better. So the cord I put on this box is a about a 25-foot 10-3 SO cord with strain relief into the box. Plus I also had a 100-foot 10-3 extension cord which I'm converting into this style of plug. And I have not changed this one yet, but I will put this one on eventually. And then this will be an extension cord for this box. So potentially I can get the generator 125 feet into the woods, which would help with noise quite a bit. So on these generators, they do not have a bonded neutral. And this video is not about 
bonding or non-bonded neutrals on generators. There's plenty of videos on the internet about that. But these Harbor Freight Inverter generators are, do not have a bonded neutral. And in order to test a GFI outlet, just for testing purposes, the way these little testers work, you need to have the neutral in the ground bonded, like it is in a house, your standard electrical panel. The way these testers work, it puts a little bit of power to the ground, and when it senses an imbalance, it will trip the GFI outlet. Well, in order to test the GFI outlet on the generator, you have to bond the neutral and the ground together. And there's plenty of videos on the internet about neutral bonding plugs, but you can bond the generator neutral and ground together by just putting this particular plug in here. Now that bonds the two together, and then therefore the GFI testers will work. I'm going to explain what I'm doing in case you can't hear me when the generator is running. I'm going to test the GFI outlets in here before I put the bonding plug in there, and then you'll see the difference when I put the bonding plug in. Okay, got the generator running. And you can see on my display, maybe you can't, get this. You can see on display 124 volts, zero amp draw, 60 hertz, you get the point. Okay, so if I, if I plug in one of these ground fault testers, okay, so I plug in that ground fault tester, you can see you can only see one light and it's a it's a fault that says there's no ground and if I hit the test button it does not trip the GFI but if I put in the bonding plug now you'll see both lights are lit up on the tester and if I hit the test button on the plug, the GFI trips. Same for both. Plug one in here. This one was already, that one was already. Okay. These lights are really dim, but they're both lit. Hit the test button, trips the GFI. So now, now that we know that that's working correctly, if I put this in here, shows both lights lit, and if I hit the test button, so that proves that the outlet on the generator does not have GFI protection. I turned some of the lights off here, so hopefully you can get a better look at this gauge that I put in the panel. I'm going to take this panel apart, and I'm going to give you a look at how I built it. Give me one second here. Yes, they do make cords like this. And I'll put this up on the screen to show you better. But it's essentially the 30 amp plug and it breaks it down into three 15 amp outlets. Well, that's fine, except it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Anything that you can plug into a standard 15 amp outlet is not designed to be fed with 30 amps. Nothing is sized for that 30 amps. The cord, the plug, the internals, Nothing is designed to handle 30 amps, so that's dangerous by itself. Second of all, if whatever you do have plugged into a cord like this that has a 15 amp plug that plugs into here, let's say it's a crock pot or a pizza oven and the thermostat inside goes bad, well now all of a sudden they can draw up to the full 30 amps and it will melt the cord, it could catch the thing on fire, it's extremely dangerous. And, not to mention, there's no ground fault protection in this. So if you plug got something plugged into here, say it's a hair dryer or a, you know, take your pick, it could be anything, it could even be a light fixture, and you touch the wrong thing, now you're going to get the full, you know, 25 to 30 amps, depending on what the generator puts out, you're going to get the full amperage through your body, and hopefully the breaker will trip. There's no ground fault protection. So this particular style of cord is extremely dangerous. It's one of those things where, you know, like the old saying goes, just because you can doesn't mean you should. You know, just because they sell this cord doesn't mean it's safe to use. And 
maybe in the desert southwest where there's no water, no moisture, you could probably get away with it. But up where we camp in the north woods where it's raining every day or potentially raining, you know, every week, everything's so- soaking wet, you know, you're going to take a hell of a shock. Before I go any further here, I want to make a disclaimer. I am not a licensed electrician. I'm showing you this box that I made for myself. If you decide to make a box similar to this for yourself, be sure you completely understand what you're doing. Do not follow any of my instruction. I'm just a guy who decided to build a project for himself. You need to understand what you're doing, or this could be extremely dangerous. Now, with that said, let's tear into this, and I'll show you exactly what I used to build it. I have to take these two top screws out because they're in the way of the top of the box latch. Okay, so the main power comes in. The black wire goes through the amp transformer for the electrical gauge first. First thing it does, it comes in goes through that. Then the black power comes to this junction here. It splits off into two hots, which then goes in to feed each main breaker. But then there's a third or a, a fourth wire here that goes into this little inline fuse holder. And I've got just a little two amp fuse in there. And that is just enough power to power the gauge. I didn't want this gauge being unprotected. So I put that little fuse holder in there. The white conductor goes to the neutral bus. And the ground conductors go into the ground, if you can see it in there, the ground conductor goes into the ground bus, which you have to add separate. Neutrals and grounds can be bonded together, but that usually happens back at the main panel. And I'm treating this like a sub panel. And so these are isolated until they go back to the generator and they can be bonded together with my bonding plug if I choose to bond it. These extra bus bars, when you buy these electrical enclosures, if you want to add an extra grounding bus, they're sold right there where the boxes are sold. It's, they're only like 3 or $4. So it's pretty simple. You just got the main power coming in, splits off for each, each breaker, plus one to feed the electrical gauge. The neutrals go, all the neutrals go to the neutral bus. The feed side of each breaker, one, one black goes to one outlet. The other black goes to the other outlet. Of course, the neutrals go back to the neutral bus. And then the grounds go to the ground bus. Now, the wire that I used from, from the breaker to the outlets, I used 10 gauge, which is good for 30 amps. I could have gotten by with 12 gauge, but I had 10 because I was working with 10 gauge. So I just, the wire between the breaker and the outlet's a little oversized, but that's fine as long as it's not undersized. And then there's the two wires that go down to this amp transformer, I guess they call it, or this amp probe for, uh, to get your amp reading on the amp gauge. And then I, I used a, uh, a strain relief from Amazon. And I've got some rubber feet on the bottom. These are nice little rubber feet, also from Amazon. And uh, the gauge, the electrical gauge, which gives you amps and watts and hertz and whatnot. That came from Amazon. Pretty simple to hook up. Not very expensive. Of course, 20 amp GFI outlets. And otherwise, it's pretty simple. As far as mounting everything in this cover, I actually measured everything. Everything I wanted to mount. And I drew it in Inkscape. And then I printed it on sticky back paper. And I stuck it to the front of this, and then I used my little air body saw, which is like an air-powered, uh, like an air-powered sawzall, and just cut out the holes. This particular hole didn't turn out too bad, but instead I just put a little black decal vinyl I put on there and just gave it a little border. Otherwise, it would have been okay, but this is a little bit better. And then just mounted the uh, the outlets into a industrial cover, mounted this cover to this cover. And just made everything fit. So that's that. It's kind of a tight fit with everything. In fact, I want to add one more thing. I've got I've got several of these little just little handles laying around. 
And I'm thinking I'm going to add a handle to this side of the box. I've got plenty of room in here that uh, the nuts and bolts won't be in the way of anything, and it should work out pretty good. But uh, like I said, if you're not 100% confident in doing this type of work, do not do it whatsoever. And it just goes back together like that. So as I'm putting this back together here, I just want to clarify that the reason for this box, there's three reasons. The ability to get the full power out of the generator instead of just using the standard outlet on the front, of the, on the front panel of the generator itself. It gives me GFI protection on outlets that are otherwise not GFI protected on the generator itself. And I get between 25 to 125 feet of length between me, my campsite, and the generator to help with noise reduction. And the best part is I've got this meter on here, so even though the meter on the generator is 125 feet away, I can still see all the information that I need. Let me know in the comments section below if you think something like this would be handy for your camping or generator setup. And also, if you have a Predator 3500 watt generator, let me know what that breaker trips at on your front panel for the standard 120 volt outlet. Like I said, some guys say it trips at 13 amps, some guys say 15, and the, and the owner's manual is very vague and only states 20 amps on a, on a diagram, not even in the, in the spec page. So let me know what your breaker trips at if you have this generator. But that's it for now. Hopefully I explained everything so you can understand it, and uh, I appreciate you watching. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more.